What would happen if a full-time eBay seller started from scratch? How quickly could they grow it? What would they try to sell? And what steps would they implement to get the sales quicker than a beginner? Well, I've been a full-time eBay seller for the past three and a half years, and recently I was able to surpass 10,000 sold items on eBay. But just last week, I created a brand new eBay account to find out how fast I could grow it. My goal is to generate $5,000 worth of sales within my first 90 days of selling. Today's day eight, and we've got a lot to do. So we're a week into this challenge, and so far we've got two sales and $125 worth of revenue to our name. So we're gonna have to get a bit of a wriggle on to try and hit this $5,000 goal that we've set for ourselves. Now, I'm still pretty confident in the $700 sourcing strategy that I put in place at the very start of this challenge. So let's get back out into the thrift store and try and find some even more good quality items. First find of the day is this Casio calculator. This is the FX 82AW Plus. Now, it goes for about $30. The sell-through rate on this one will be a touch slow, but I'm still happy to pick it up for the $5. I am ecstatic with this find though, guys. Uh, we've got the Simpsons hit and run PlayStation 2 game for just $3. I am so excited about this. The, the game is even in great condition. There's hardly any scratches on it. This is a big, big get. There is a very big reason why, not only obviously the sale price of this game is great, but there's a bigger reason why this game is such a good find. And it is part of what I wanted to talk about in this video today. So the timing of this find is ridiculous. Uh, I'm gonna take you back home and I'm actually gonna go through it with you now. It seems appropriate uh, to talk about it with you now. And then from there, we'll go back out and we'll do some more sourcing to find the rest of that 700 bucks that we need. So before this series kicked off, I wanted to do a little bit of research to try and put myself in the best position with the micro store to get some fast sales. And I reached out to my Instagram audience and I said to them, do you have a store that is less than 500 items, but you're actually transacting more sales in the last 90 days than you have active listings? And I got these three stores reply back to me. And I was blown away. The one on the left here, 127 active listings, yet they've sold 197 items in the last 90 days. Uh, the one in the middle, 207 and 225. But the one on the right, 389 active listings, yet they've sold 596 items with a really, really strong average sale price as well. So naturally, I said to these guys, how are you doing this? Because I'm about to start a second store and I would really like my store to look a lot like this. The higher average sale price, was mandatory. They weren't playing with the small stuff. They they're, they're only got 100 or so items in their store. So every single item needs to be of a high average sale price, around that sort of 50 to $60 worth of a listing value. A strong sell-through rate, and I'm gonna show you some examples of strong sell-through rate in just a second. Um, some strong descriptive titles, front-ending, the keyword information, which I'm gonna show you with this one here, Simpsons Hit and Run. Uh, I'm gonna show you how to front-end the correct uh, words at the front of the title to get the job done. Um, consistent listing habits as well. So they're in a process or a rhythm, they know what they're doing with their listings and they're doing it nice and consistently. Hopefully for us, our 700 bucks a week is gonna be consistent enough to generate some sales, but we'll obviously play that by ear. Um, competitive pricing as well. Now, when it comes to pricing, you don't wanna be like wildly low and undercut the entire market because you're gonna sacrifice your own profit. Um, but you do wanna be just ever so slightly at the bottom of the chain, I believe, when you're first starting out. You need to be competitive in some way. You're not getting a bunch of impressions or page views, but as soon as you bring that price down ever so slightly, uh, you're competitive enough to, to ultimately get the sale, even with very small feedback on your store. Um, niching down as well. They said niching down into two to three different categories uh, was incredibly crucial. Now, examples of sell through rate. We've got Nintendo Wii Sports Resort. We've got 214 listed on the left-hand side there. And then on the right-hand side, 261 have gone on to sell. Um, so that's an over 100% sell-through rate, and that is a very good item to be finding. I think Wii Sports Resort, you're generally gonna sell it for about $40. So you can consider that $40 in your pocket within a much shorter time frame than any other product that you, you were trying to find out there. Now, this one, Wii, um, Wii Sports Resort, Simpsons Hit and Run. I wanted to go through that and show you that sell-through rate. This is why I was so excited in the thrift that I've run home to talk to you all about sell-through rate. Um, this one, we've got 87 listed on eBay currently, yet there's been a 200% sell-through rate for this game 
at 169 sold. So with a really strong average sale price of about 70 or $80 for this game, this is why it's just one of the Hail Mary plays when you're in a thrift store finding it for $3 because you're going to get that really high average sale price of $70 to $80 and you're also going to get it selling really, really quickly based on these statistics. So all of this information is available to you when you're out in the thrift store. You can check sell-through rate by filtering sold to see how many items have sold in the last 90 days and obviously you can do your comp checks to see how much your item's actually going to be worth. So um, if you're just starting out on eBay, like these big guys are doing, you want to make sure you're buying the right items, you're making sure it's got a good sell-through rate and you're going to be fine. just like that, this thing's up. So hopefully over the next few days it can go on to sell, which you're confident it will. All right, so day nine was, to be honest, pretty uneventful from a second store challenge point of view. Um, quite eventful for the YouTube channel. I was making a video around the top 10 VHS tapes. Um, so definitely check that out on the channel. It's already up and, and live. Um, but I, I did get two sales come through into the second store. So our third and our fourth sale which is awesome. Two sales in one day. I'm blown away by that because we've literally only had two sales in eight, eight days up until this point. Uh, the first sale that we got came through this morning and it was a pair of ASICS Gel Lethal 19 men's footy boots. Now, I bought these eight days ago, so we had an eight-day sell-through rate. Uh, it sold for $39. We bought them in a thrift store for $5.00. And I've got the fees, the post, and the cost of goods here. We ended up making a profit of $16.96. So, look, to, you know, to spend five to make 17, I think you'll always do that no matter what the product is. But to get an eight-day sell-through rate is great. Uh, and then we had the Wild Boys DVD. And you guys might have remembered we picked that up. I think it was in last week's episode as well. Um, that was just a dollar um, for the Wild Boys DVD. And uh, we actually got a $39.95 sale price on that one. Fees post, the cost of goods obviously being a dollar, $21.74 we made uh, in profit with another eight-day sell-through rate. So that's really exciting. While there's not too much more to report today, we are going to be going out tomorrow and doing some more thrifting to add towards that $700 that we need in stock to continue hopefully this sales momentum. So we've done pretty well here, guys. I've pulled out a couple that are worth quite a bit of money. Courtney's been doing some comp research while I've been looking for the best titles. Parks and Recreation, we've got seasons one to seven. That's a complete set, the farewell season. Um, it goes for about 45 to 50. It's all a dollar a disc in here today, which is just brilliant. Um, we've got Madam Secretary here as well. We're missing season one. Um, but we're going to get some decent money on that, even without that first season. Uh, and then this one here, this was a bit of a rare title. It's called Mako Mermaids. It's only a volume two, season three, and a volume one, season two. But they were going for about $20 a piece. So I think we could be able to list that up for about $30, and that should do well as well. Um, I grabbed these because they're just such a good show. Remember in the past episode, we bought a, a bundle of this? Well, I've got season three and four, so I'm actually just buying that for later on purposes. Hopefully we can find a few more seasons down the line. This was just a random DVD that I, I scanned up and it was worth $25, Firestarter. Um, so that's one for you guys to be aware of. And then these, check these out. We've got a bunch of games. So out of these games, there were some really good titles in there. Courtney said, she said they were all worth over $15. So I haven't done any comp checks on this. I think she said this one was worth about $40, Lost Planet 3, Alan Wake, on Xbox 360, and I this one surprises me. I Toy Play 3 apparently was going for some good money. Um, so yeah, some really good games there. Six games and then a bunch of DVDs. Uh, it's been absolutely worth sifting through all of this. So all up, that's gonna cost us $22. We've got some really good games, got some good TV show sets. Pretty happy about that. Yeah. 
We don't come across that too often in these thrift stores, so that's it's just been a really good deal to see. And it doesn't look like it had been picked out too heavily. There's a few titles that we're leaving behind, uh, like this one, Offspring Season 1 to 5. We're actually leaving that one behind because it only goes for $25. Um, you know, Big Bang Theory, we're leaving that behind. We're even leaving some episodes of Lost behind as well we're not really spending the time to um, scan up any of these movies not to say there wouldn't be someone like firestarter in there worth 25 to 30 and uh, we just don't have the time to go through it but if you wanted to educate yourselves on different movies different genres scanning up a rack like this um you know you'd be able to get some really good knowledge out of it any books no, no. no books no. not doing a heavy focus around the books so I think the fact that we've been able to score so many really good DVDs and video games, uh, we might just call that a day and head off to the next store. One of the most bizarre things you'll ever see. Eight dollar DVD seasons in this store, guys. Eight, 16, 32 dollars for a part series set of Downton Abbey, if you're interested. Eight bucks for George, generally. One to eight. I think that goes for about 50 or 60. Yeah, wow, that's awesome. So that's eight, so I have him there. Yeah, on top. That was there. bizarre guys because we were seeing DVDs in that store per season for about $7 and then this one here, Only Fools and Horses, which sells for about 50 bucks, uh, didn't have a price on it. So I went up and asked the lady and she goes, oh, DVDs, um, how about 6 bucks?" So I was like, yeah, absolutely. Uh, and then we got that George Gently. George Gently was going for $8, yet there was one season of Home Improvement uh, that was going for 7 so I have no, uh, I got no idea what they were doing in there. We found these. Um, so we got Satisfaction, um, season one to three. There is there, they're $3 each. So it's gonna be $9, but I think we can turn it into about 45. So that's kind of good. And then I've also got this one here, which is a really good one, Girls Next Door. Um, three dollars for season one. We should be able to, I'd probably say, get about 35 to 40 for this. Uh, there was a sale for 79. <laughs> there was a sale for 79, but uh, I think it's more worth around the 40 dollar mark, but still not bad for three bucks. We just found all of these magazines called Truck and Life. And we were curious to just search them up and see just because there were so many of them like we've got a massive stack of them here and they're all priced at just a dollar each so no, this didn't find that yeah if you search truck and life uh truck and life magazine so if you search highest price sort highest okay so there was some comps in the 200s and the 100s, like this one here, 2018 bundle of 11. It went for 175 on best offer, and 1988 that went for 170. So, you know, look at that, that's a perfect one. Look at that. 2000 and 2001, and then a 2017 for seven. So they're selling for like, 20 bucks each. Yeah. And we've got 13 of them. Yeah. So potentially, that's potentially a $200 listing. What are we doing now? I don't know, what are we gonna do? Time for a burrito at Zambrero's. Zambrero's. Get hit by a car. I don't know if you can hear that. I have a super loud oven, I'm just making dinner. 
I've also got a super creaky staircase as well. Old bones to this place that I'm in. Um, but I've moved myself into my... How cool is... I love, I love those lights. I love those lights, the Monopoly man. Um, back in the office, for good reason, we have just had a sale come through. So let me just set up the camera and I'll take you through it. We had the Alpine Star motorcycle gloves. Hopefully I'm not too dark there. The Alpine uh, Star's gloves. We bought these in week one and we paid $8 for them. They've sold in nine days and we got an $84.95 sale price having bought them for $8. So after fees, postage, the cost of goods, we're looking at a $53.60 profit here, guys. That's epic. That's really, really cool. Ultimately, our fifth sale now. Fifth store sale and by far the best store sale for value at $84.95 and profit for $53.60. That's epic. All right, so we've got two days left for week two. Um, what I think I'm going to do here, even though we've had three sales so far this week, which is beating our two sales last week, I'd still like to bump the numbers up a little bit because we're not quite at the $325 revenue goal for this week that we need. And with a couple of days to go, I'd really like to, well, hope that the listings that we bought over the last, well, 24 to 48 hours that have gone into the system will help us get a couple more sales this week. But I think I can definitely fast track things by using a, a, a perfect eBay sales tactic of promoting my listings a, a couple more percent. I think I'm going to run this for a few days. I don't think I'm going to hold it for too long. The beauty of it is you can swap and change it however much you like. Um, so we've always done 3% to start off, but I'm actually going to bump it up double that. I'm going to go to 6% uh, and I'm just going to see if that has any effect on the sales just before we round out the sales results for this week. So I think it's a really good tool for beginner sellers. You get access to it immediately. Sure, you have to pay less in or you pay more in fees because you're promoting at a higher percentage. But um, when you're just starting out, it's important to sacrifice your profit a little bit just to get some transactions under your belt, um, start, start fulfilling the process. So we'll see how we go with that. All right, we have made it to the end of week two, guys. This is actually the morning of day 15. Um, so having a look at the numbers from last week, if we jump into eBay, um, we've been able to get four sales. There was an additional sale that has just come through, which I'm going to show you guys in just a second. So four sales for the week, promoting the listings for an extra 3% has caused this extra sale to come through. So I'll definitely take it. It's a jump from two sales to four sales from weeks one to two. Um, so that's awesome. Now, there's a $49 21 average sale price. So we've still been able to hold that $50 average sale price that we want to continue with. Um, $196 came in, beating the $125 that we had come through in week one. Um, so that's awesome to see some growth there. Um, the sale that we had come through was, was these. Uh, it was a pair of Adidas footy boots that I picked up a week ago. Um, so it was a really good sale to see come through because we bought them in a thrift store for $6, a seven-day turnaround. Um, after fees, post, and cost of goods, we've made a good 12 odd dollars. Um, so 12 bucks there in profit buying them for $6. I'll definitely take it. Um, we can get these out to the buyer, get some positive feedback, and keep letting this train roll on. So a $32.95 sale price for that one there is awesome. So that's how officially week two finished up. However, we had an amazing sale that has just come through last night. It technically falls into day 15, so I should be putting this into the week three video, but I'm too eager to let you guys in on this, so I'm going to give it to you now. Um, Simpsons Hit and Run. We've sold it. It took seven days. We got a sale for Simpsons Hit and Run, $69.95 uh, worth of a, a sale. So that is just exciting. And honestly, like I touched on at the beginning of the video earlier this week, I was just so confident this was going to sell fast. And the fact that it's been able to sell in a brand new store um, just, again, continues to highlight how important sell-through rate is for products. Um, we got a, a profit there of about $50 after fees, post, and cost of goods. So you can add an extra $70 technically, I guess, um, so we're looking at about $266 um, worth of uh, ultimately a, a week two sales period, um, which gets us a whole lot closer to the $350 odd dollar goal um, that we want to be hitting on a weekly basis in revenue because that puts us on track to hit our $5,000 goal. If you are enjoying these videos, guys, uh, definitely consider hitting that subscribe button. We've got another 11 videos to go in this series towards $5,000, so there's plenty more content to come. But uh, I'll leave you with the playlist right here in case you've missed any of those previous episodes. But appreciate you being here, guys. Look forward to seeing you over there.